Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salatu wa salam ala habib mustafa wa ala alihi wa ashabi wa ala man tabal huda ma ba'd. Rabbi shuhli sadri wa yasalli amri wa hal uqtatan min lisani fqahu qawli subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma alamtana inna kanta alamimul hakim. Allahumma alimna bima yanfa'una wa anfa'al bima alamtana wa zidna ilma. Amin ya rabbal alamin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu dear brothers and sisters. We warmly welcome you to... A unique webinar on spirituality of Ramadan and 15th of Sha'ban. Now I know that everybody uh, does have um, a lot of queries about uh, 15th of Sha'ban, when is the 15th of Sha'ban and what do we do uh, on the night of 15th of Sha'ban, uh, when do we fast and should we fast or not. Uh, and following this we will talk uh, there's about the spirituality of Ramadan that how can we capitalize on the month of Ramadan where we can gain spiritual benefit inshallah that's what this whole host uh, this whole webinar is going to be about delivered by Sheikh Muti Saif al-Islam and hosted by our JK and Fatawa department these are our details so yeah so before we begin I just wanted to introduce you to our project our JK and Fatawa department and some of our upcoming webinars uh, this is our um, uh, this is our uh, uh, website. So we have the Jake and Fatawa department website that where we respond to many queries. We have, uh, we put uh, uh, Fatawa videos on where we address a lot of contemporary issues. Uh, and Alhamdulillah, it has been running for over a year now. We launched officially in, ja in January 2020. And Alhamdulillah, since the launch of the Jake and Fatawa department, we have delivered uh, Number, numerous of courses for example we delivered one on uh, depression depression in islam we discussed one on um, the fiqh of traveling we talked about the detail must detail rulings related to the um, qasr uh, performing uh, performing qasr salah uh, how to calculate the um, mileage is it 48 miles 56 miles and so on and so forth so we talked about in great detail especially with women if they're menstruating and traveling how do the rules of qasr apply to them and so on and so forth so alhamdulillah we have been uh, delivering a lot of webinars and there are many much more webinars to upcome today and much of the details they are available on our website so if you can if you do in your own time if you do visit this website and you can see this part here where it says courses you can access uh, you can visit all of our up our all of our courses that we've delivered and by the way i forgot to mention that we've delivered one on islamophobia as well uh, usually the, um, uh, the Islam Before the event is on November. We alhamdulillah delivered that as well. And we delivered that where, uh, where we invited um, a guest from uh, Amalana who's also from MEND. Uh, and I talked about it from the Islamic perspective. So all of our courses, our previous webinars and our upcoming webinars, they are all available on the website. If you could just click on to the course page, this course is here. And uh, all of our latest questions um, and all of our Q, uh, Q and A's that we've answered are various different topics related to ibadat, uh, family law, um, dietary law, everything, etc. They're all available and be accessible on this Q and A session, uh, on this Q and A icon here. And then we have our fatwa videos and so on and so forth. All of them are, are accessible here. So this is the top part of our. Uh, website and this is the bottom half of our uh, bottom half of our website as you can see here these are some of our latest queries that we've answered we have about a couple that who will be that will be uploaded inshallah in the uh, in the next week or so so we would highly request that in order for um, in order for you in order for uh, uh, for our website and our project to be running we are asking for donations so if anybody would like to donate towards uh, Jake and Fatawa department you could do this just by simply clicking onto the, um, uh, you could just do by, by simply clicking onto this donation uh, tab here and donate generously. Uh, and all of this donation will be go will be funded towards uh, our projects, uh, maintain the Jake and Fatawa department and so on and so forth. And these are our upcoming webinars. Uh, we have Alhamdulillah, the Fiqh of Fasting for Sisters. Uh, that's going to be, um, that's going to be delivered on Saturday, the 3rd of April, uh, between 2 and 5 p.m by our guest, by the two Muftiya Apas who are graduate from JKN Institute. We've got Muftiya Sajidah and Muftiya uh, Gulmariam, inshallah. They are part of the research team of the JKN Fatawa department. So they will be uh, so they will be delivering the fic of, uh, fast uh, fic of fasting for the sisters. And we have one delivered by myself the next day, only for the brothers. Uh, on Sunday, the 4th of April, uh, which is again the same time between 2 to 5 p.m. And both of these courses, the brothers and the sisters, the way it's going to be delivered is going to be very, it's going to be interactive. So the idea is that we can give you the basic information, give you examples and give you case example case studies. So in order to make this much more interactive and to help you to understand and apply those, um, apply those uh, 
and basic principles and rules are related to fasting, especially those that invalidate fast and no invalidation fast and so on and so forth. Again, all the details are on our website. Again, all of our, all of our webinars here are free. So you can join by clicking by registering. So if there is a so pre-registration is required. So these are the upcoming courses which are going to be which are going to be delivered next week, inshallah. So for those sisters who still have not registered for the Fiqh of Fasting for Sisters, you can please go and visit the website and you can join the uh, visit website or register. Uh, and likewise for the brothers, if you uh, likewise for the brothers, you can uh, again go to the website and and join uh, register for the call, uh, register for the webinar. Uh, this is today's agenda, so it's basically a basic simple. Um, so as we're doing the introduction, inshallah, about uh, 10 past 12, so we hope we are, we do apologize for um, going over time, but Mufti Sab, inshallah, will be now delivering the talk. So without further ado, inshallah, I will now pass it on to uh, Sheikh Mufti Saif al-Islam Sab, if I can request Mufti Sab to uh, switch his camera on and um, for Mufti Saif al-Islam to uh, join this session, inshallah. Jim Mufsab, you can. <coughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'ufiruhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'amalina man yahdihillahu falamudillala wa man yudlil falahadiyala ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا مولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وعبد ربك حتى يأتيك اليقين صدق الله العظيم respected علماء الكرام عالمات brothers, sisters, mothers, youngsters, students. I'd like to welcome everyone on this session. Alhamdulillah Mukti Abdul Wahid Saab has introduced the program, the spirituality of Ramadan and the 15th of Sha'ban. So the question might come like it came to me yesterday all night that 15th of Sha'ban, when is the 15th of Sha'ban? So many of our brothers and sisters, they actually worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, did the ibadah yesterday, saying that it was the 15th of Sha'ban and today they are fasting. That's no problem. There will be many of us who will be doing ibadah today and also for fasting tomorrow. So whichever group you are in, it doesn't matter. We have to have this mentality to agree to disagree. Agree to disagree. And this is the biggest problem that we have. If we can take this on board, and then many of our spiritual side in Ramadan and out of Ramadan till our last moments. Worship your Lord until Yaqeen comes, i.e. until death. So please have this mentality of agreeing to disagree. So basically, if a person has this mind, then it's okay. Beautiful words of the Arabic couplets come in my mind, uh, it's just amazing. It says, At an What is tarbiya? Upbringing. A person, he understands things, the nurturing of a person, the upbringing of a person, when a child is nurtured, then he knows, Tarbiyat is that he recognizes when to speak, when to speak. He's not stubborn, he's not arrogant, he's not obstinate. So, tarbiyat of bringing, nurturing of a child, of a person, of a brother or a sister is that he knows when to speak. He doesn't just blurt out anything. Anything that comes in his mind nowadays is the big problem we have. And I see that on a daily basis. People he say, look, brother, don't speak now. Sister, you know, I'm trying to reconcile between you two. If you speak on, it's going to cause more problem. So people don't understand when to speak and when not to speak. And then he says that good character is that you listen attentively to the person who's speaking. And listen attentively. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Luqman, 
ولا تصعر خدك للناس ولا تمشي في الأرض مرحا. That never ever turn your cheeks away from the person, from the people. That when you are speaking, you always put your full attention, full dedication, full focus towards that person. The al akhlaqu an tasmi alimay yatakallam. Akhlaq is that you listen attentively. Ata ibn Abi Rabah rahimahullah taala was very famous. That he says that many people come to me and they narrate to me a hadith, masail that I knew these masail before he was even born. But I used to listen so attentively that this person is to be thinking that he's my teacher, he's teaching me something. So having that habit of listening, we need to have this habit that we listen attentively. Number three, well, adabu Allah tuqati amayyatakallam. Adab, etiquette is that you don't interrupt when somebody's speaking. Allah tuqati amayyatakallam. You might be thinking that we're supposed to be doing spirituality of Ramadan here, but I think this is very important spirituality. If we can get this, like in the month of Ramadan, when we are having a discussion with our wife, we shouldn't be going beyond the limits. So, and unfortunately, things happen and things go out of hand. So, we don't want these things happening. So, if we can keep that in mind, other, that when somebody is speaking, listen attentively. And then at the end of the day, he says, Subhanallah, the ending, he says, Allah tusaddika kullama yatakallam. And the geniusness and a person intellect is that he doesn't just and he accept everyone. He doesn't just think that everybody who speaks, he shouldn't be naive, basically. He shouldn't be very gullible, very vulnerable in that way. Allah to say that every single person who speaks, he shouldn't be thinking to himself that this person uh, to accept everything, to testify to everything. No, no, don't do that. Allah to say that. Don't just trust everyone. Make sure that you are clever to understand, you are uh, understanding the situation. That's why when the emperor of Rome, he actually asked uh, his ambassador who came to see Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Amir al-Mu'mineen. So he said, can you describe him? He said it in two words. Umar radiallahu ta'ala, la yakhda'u wa la yukhda'u. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu is that person who doesn't deceive and he doesn't get deceived. Allahu Akbar. Two words. La yakhda'u wa la yukhda'u. He doesn't deceive. That shows his highest level of faithfulness, loyalty, honesty, and wala yukhda, he doesn't get deceived, very alert, very conscious. He knows everything was happening around him. And these two qualities, if you have them, then you are successful. So I don't want to digress, but I thought I digressed here objectively to explain this point that we need to, whether we followed wifaqul ulama, whether we followed hizbul ulama, whether we followed jamiyatul ulama, whether we followed Saudi, whether we followed South Africa, whether we followed the observatory, whether we followed Morocco, whatever we've done or local moon sighting, it doesn't matter. Just follow your local masjid, local imams, and leave it to them. Those brothers and sisters who are not scholars, I always say to them, I advise them that just follow the local ulama, your local masjid, and that's okay. It doesn't matter. It will be completely fine. So many of our brothers and sisters, they already had the Shababarat yesterday, and many of us we will be having the Shababarat today. So basically, as a Muslim, the verse I read in the beginning of my khutbah, Wa'abud Rabbaka hatta ya'atiyaka al-yaqeen. Worship your Lord until yaqeen comes. In other words, we should be full-time Muslims. The problem we have is that we have started to pick and choose. So many of us in the entire year, Apart from Ramadan, we'll be fasting on Shabbat Barat on the next day. Like, for example, many brothers and sisters are fasting today. Many will be fasting tomorrow. And that's it. And in reality, the Prophet ﷺ has said that a person should be fasting. And he did fast practically. He showed us, Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anhu says that he did not fast two continuous months except for Shaban and Ramadan. So basically, in the month of Shaban, he nearly completed all the fast. He might have missed one or two, but he did complete fast in month of Shaban. The reason to that is, he says, this uh, kind of starting of Ramadan, uh, pre-start, and like we have sunnahs before, so before the Faraz fast, we have the sunnah fast. So he fasted nearly entire month. And we will fast on, for example, the 10th of Muharram or the day of Arafah. And throughout the year, we will not fast. 
اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ سیز یا ایوہ اللذین آمنوا دخلو فی السلم کافا that oh believers enter Islam entirely don't be a part time Muslim so the main point here is today we're going to be praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we're going to be crying in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will be repenting we will be asking forgiveness and then tomorrow back to normal we need to build 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 but we can't break the building the zakhira akhirat the treasures of the akhirat that we are building the buildings of jannah that we are erecting we need to continue with this throughout our life this month of ramadan is the month of training so this shababarat is just a kind of draft of copy of what's going to be happening for the rest of the year and on the laylatul qadr that will be made permanent so whatever allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts for example in the kitabs that we read says that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he finalizes everything and these details are passed on to the angels who are going to be uh, dying this uh, following year those children who are going to be born uh, the amount of risk a person is going to be getting all these things are written that's why the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said i want to be in the state of fasting when this report is going to the angels from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the point here is this night those who have worked, mashallah may allah accept our worship allah accept toba and ibadah those who are going to be doing ibadah today and as i said we should make a habit of doing ibadah every night in the hadith he says man salla salat al isha fi jama'at fa ka'annama qama nisf al the person who has read just jamaat so brothers we need to get the habit we need to get the habit of our masjid unfortunately we have become late and we staying at home the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says la salata li jari al masjid illa fil masjid there is no salah of a person who lives in the neighborhood of the masjid put in the masjid so each and every brother and even sisters as well make a habit that we're going to make sure that we perform our salah on time in the hadith he mentioned man salla lillahi arba'ina yawman fi jama'atin yudriku takbirat al ula person who performs salah for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 40 days in jama'at getting the takbir ula the first takbir kutibat lahu bara'atan for him there will be two bara'at two certificates two rewards for him two freedom two deliverance bara'atun min an-nar wa bara'atun min an-nif freedom from fire of jahannam deliverance from the fire of jahannam wa bara'atun min an-nif and freedom from hypocrisy allahu akbar so each and every brother who's listening and that will be recorded and i hope that every brother who will be listening to this and even our sisters at home try to do this that 40 days without missing a salah even those days when we are not performing our salah in the fit kitab it comes for the sisters they should perform the wuzu sit down on the prayer mat do some tasbihat read some durood sharif read some dua so the habit remains the habit stays it becomes perm so especially our brothers let us go to the masjid let that today is the starting and there's no ending until our last breath The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam even on his last moments maradul wafat he went with the help of two companions Sayyiduna Ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu Sayyiduna Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu at the time was Fadl ibn Abbas and they took him with their support the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam joined the jamaat Allahu akbar and what was the last thing that he said left this world as salah as salah wa ma malakat imanukum salah Oh my ummat salah be watchful be punctual be at pass on your salah and those who are under your relation under your guardianship make sure that you look after them you fulfill the rights so it's very important that we keep in mind and we always on shababarat we listen but whose duas are not accepted obviously i don't want to go in details of that and many of us we know a person who is a mushrik a person who is a polytheist his duas are not accepted alhamdulillah allah has given us iman lak alhamdu ala ni'matil islam lak alhamdu ala ni'matil iman alhamdulillah allah wa ta'ala has given us this blessing so basically 
And so, Alhamdulillah, we don't come into that category. But the second thing he says, those people who have jealousy, those people who have jealousy. So this jealousy is very dangerous. So if we, from today's lesson, if we can take this on board, that we are going to have a clean heart regarding every person. Whether he's my friend, whether he's my foe, whether he's my enemy, whether he's my relative or non-relative, whether he's my neighbor or whether he's my workmate, employee, employer, subject, whatever it is, I'm going to make sure that I clean my heart every night before I go to sleep. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Asr says, I was in the gathering of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he praised a person that the next person who's going to be coming is a person of Jannah. So everyone very intrigued, inquisitive. They are waiting anxiously to find out who this person is. Then this person, he just comes out in the Hadith he mentions, the water of wuzu is dripping from his limbs and he comes and sits down. The following day, similar gathering takes place and the Prophet ﷺ makes the similar announcement. That the going to be exiting and he's going to come in front of you. He is so the same person came. Third, the announcement of the same person came. Abdullah bin Amr bin Asad said, Allah Akbar, I need to find out what good deeds this person carries out. And listen to this, my brother and sister. So, and he says to him, look, I had an altercation with my wife. And I need some, I need some way to So the Arab subhan and the hospitality was just phenomenal. He said, okay, you can stay with me. So he goes and sees him and he's observing. He's not sleeping. He's observing every action of this person. What good deed is he carrying out? So he, after he performs his Isha, he goes to sleep. In the morning, he performs his Fajr and that's it. He comes, Hazrat Abdullah bin Amr bin Asad, he uh, leaves his home. And the next day evening, he says to him again, the altercation still, uh, the rift is there. So can I stay another night? He says, okay, you can come over. So he does the same. And the following, well, this happens. So he goes and stays, but he doesn't see any kind of extra worship or any unusual kind of ibadat that he's doing that will uh, guarantee him this kind of gen and the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi glad tidings. So he's leaving and so he's quite uh, upset. And so he asks him, brother, why did you come for? He goes, no, I just wanted to uh, stay with you. He goes, no, no, you tell me. Then he goes, the reason I came, then he told him that, the three days continuously, the Prophet mentioned the person who's going to be coming in front of you now. He is a person of Jannah. So I was very intrigued to know who this person is. I was really anxious to know uh, who this person is and what kind of good deeds he does. And he was yourself. And then but you saw me what I did at night time. This is what I do. So then, okay, no problem. I'm leaving. Then he calls him back. Just leaving, he calls him. Just come back. But the one thing I do before I go to sleep, listen to this, before I go to sleep, if we can do this, my brother and my sister, then our gathering would be successful. And I think I have done something which, inshallah, will bring Allah's pleasure upon me, every one of us, that if we can get this in our life, Allahu Akbar. He says, every night before I go to sleep, I clean my chest from all kind of enmity, hatred, jealousy, malice, rancor, anything that will cause difficulty for my Muslim brother to have any kind of enmity or hatred, I just completely eradicate, erase, and delete that from my heart and mind. So he said, that's it. This is the thing which has given you this position. And this is what exactly what the Prophet ﷺ said to Anas anhu, the khadim of the Prophet ﷺ. He said, Ya Bunayya, in qadarta an aw tumsiya, that, ya Bunaya, oh my beloved son, if you can't spend your morning or evening whilst you don't have no hatred, no malice, no rancor, no jealousy, adding any person, then do that. Because this is from my sunnah. And a person who loves my sunnah, he loves me. And a person who loves me, he will be with me in paradise. 
So subhanallah, today each and every one of us, it doesn't matter whether you have done shabarat or not. If we still have some hatred for somebody, if we just have some kind of reservation regarding anybody, my brother, my sister, this life is very short. I always say we don't have time to express our love for them. When do we have time to hate each and every one of us need to get this thing in our minds that we need to learn how to forgive and forget. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do you know, subhanallah, I was supposed to be speaking about Ramadan, but many other points are coming in my mind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word jameel in three places. Beautiful. One, he says, Fasabrun jameel. That when you are patient, have this kind of patience, which is jameel means beautiful in the Arabic language. So what does it mean, Fasabrun jameel here? That patience, that there is no complaint. Allah, I am patient. I'm not complaining about anything. My father has moved on. He has left this world. I have this. I had this accident. I am not complaining. I am not complaining about it. Like that's why he says it is okay to complain to Allah, and it's not right to complain about Allah. You can. We should complain to Allah. Allah. This inna ma ashku bafi wa huzni ila Allah. Sayyidina Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam said, Allah, I complain to you regarding my grief and regarding my problems and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please remove them. But if you complain about Allah, why Allah, why did you do this to me? No, that's very dangerous. So fasabrun jamil, that's sabr which is the patience which there is no complaint about Allah. Why did you do it? Allah, why is it me? It's not fair. Like in one of the newspapers after the earthquake happened in Haiti, so on the newspaper, headline was written, why, oh God, why did you do this to us when we did nothing to you? Allah, Allah. so much audacity, so shocking. So, fasabrun jameel. The second one, fasfahi safh al jameel. Forgive person, forgive the person. Safh al jameel, that forgiveness which is very beautiful. What does it mean? You forgive and forget. Nowadays, we say, okay, brother, I've forgiven you. Go, I don't want to see your face again. What kind of forgiveness is this? Forgive that beautiful forgiveness. Look, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Hazrat Allah Akbar, Shweb alayhi salatu wa salam says, We are home, istighfiru rabbakum. Oh, my beloved people, do istighfar to Allah. Then he said, Inna rabbi rahimu wadud. Allahu Akbar. It's so amazing. The Arabic language, I wish you could just comprehend these words. Say, so, Inna rabbi, my Lord is rahim. He's very merciful, compassionate, and he's very loving. What the scholars of Tafsir mention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after showing the mercy, he starts to love you as well. Nowadays, if somebody forgives, that's more than enough. Leave alone. Don't even think that he's going to be connecting back to you again. Never. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so loving. He says that after the mercy, because when Allah shows mercy on us, that means he's given us the ability to carry out good deeds. He's given us the ability to do all the good things. And then he has expanded our rizq. He also, when we say rahmat, ask for rahmat to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're asking for bihisab mafir without any accounts, forgiveness, and the entrance into Jannah. On top of all this, Allah starts to love us that he says, hasanat. Even the misdeeds, the transgression, the vice, the sins, they are transformed into good deeds. Allahu Akbar. Inna Rabbi Rahim Wadud. These qualities. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Fir'aun, he said, Ana Rabbukum al-A'la. Subhanallah. Fakaifa rifkuka. Man qala, Ana Rabbukum al-A'la. Look at your mercy on that person who said, Ana Rabbukum al-A'la. So just imagine a person who says, Subhan Rabbi al-A'zim. Subhan Rabbi al-A'la. Oh my Lord, you are the greatest. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, to Fir'aun and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing Musa alayhi salatu was salam, فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلَ اللَّيْنَا Allahu Akbar. O Musa, O Harun, go to Fir'aun, say to him soft words. Allahu Akbar. For to, to who? To whom? Who said, أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَى Allahu Akbar. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us. مَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِكُمْ إِنْ شَكَرُتُمْ وَآمَنْتُمْ What is Allah going to be doing to you? What is Allah going to do by punishing you. If you just be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will not punish us. 
Allahu Akbar. So my point is, my brother, my sister, whatever time of the year, we don't wait. Like a lot of people, they wait for Shabbat Barat. They wait for Laylatul Barat. At that night, they will phone the father and mother. And even that forgiveness, even that asking forgiveness is in a haughty way. Okay, mother, well, forgive me. Father, you know, son, I must have done so many things. Forgive me. So this forgiveness needs forgiveness. This haughtiness, this stubbornness, being so obstinate in that way, this is very dangerous. So that's why my brother, my sister, let us get this habit every night before going to sleep. Like the Sahabi who was giving the glad tidings of Jannah because of this, subhanAllah, let us emulate his qualities in our life. There are so many others, those people who duas are not going to be accepted, those people who sever relationship, especially with parents, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not enter a person who severs a relationship. A person who weighs, who has garments, he puts his clothes below his ankles. Allah, this thing, we have taken it very lightly. So the hadith of Bukhari, Sharif, so it's very authentic hadith. He says, Ma asfala min al-ka'bay min al-izar fa fin nar. That piece of cloth which is below the ankle, this will be in the fire of Jahannam. So whether it is in Salah or out of Salah, my brothers, please take that on board. So this is so looked down by Allah, it's so sinful that Allah will not accept the dua of that person on this blessed night as well. So you just imagine how dangerous it is. So until we have our clothing below our ankles, we are continuously, perpetually committing sin until we don't sort it out. So those people need to make sure that they have their clothing above the ankles and those people who drink alcohol those people who keep dogs like keeping dogs allahu akbar as a muslim is so sad that as a muslim we are keeping dogs and we try to justify it no for security purpose we keep so person obviously the sharia has given the permissibility when there is a security purpose there's no other way than you can keep a dog outside and, but in normal situation in the UK, for a Muslim, there's no need to keep a dog. So it's very important that we keep that in mind, that what kind of pets we can keep. We can keep cats as pets, but we can't just keep anything and everything. So those who have photos, like nowadays, this thing has become a big problem, that our wedding photos, every place that we go to, Snapchat, everything, we'll have to have the photo on our profile, uh, we have to have it, uh, we have to splash it out on our Facebook. And Allahu Akbar, a time we had in, uh, when we were young, we used to see people used to write diary, we used to write diary as well. And that was to be utmost, topmost secret. And nobody could read that. Even a person used to get offended if the mother or father looked into the diary. And today is completely opposite. All our secret matters, our private matters, it displayed, splashed on the social media, and if somebody doesn't comment or puts the likes, then we get offended. Allahu Akbar. The time has changed so much. The time has changed so much. We need to understand Allahu Akbar. Let us use our aqal. Shah Waliullah Muhaddis Dehli Rahmatullah Alayhi he writes under Kitabul Fitan in his Hujjatullah al Baligha that those fitan, those trials and tribulations which is we're going to be afflicted, and we are the living statistics. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. He says, I'lam anna al-fitna ala aqsam. Minha fitna to rajul fi nafsihi. Bi'a ay yaksua qalbu. Fala yajidu lazzata ta'ati wala lazzata al-munajat. I don't want to digress and explain about the fitna, but this is what's happening day and night. That the fitna, the trial and tribulation within ourselves, then we don't like to worship. We don't like to listen to Islamic lectures. We'll be wasting our time on all these Facebook and, you know, listening to jokes and watching all these person slipping and person, you know, all these jokes and all these laughter things. Islam, especially now, subhanAllah, Salahuddin Ayyubi rahimahullah ta'ala, when he realized that Masjid Aqsa has been taken by the enemies of Islam, what did he say? I will not laugh. I will not smile. I will not chuckle until I don't get Masjid Aqsa back to the hands of the Muslims. And he stayed to his words. He kept his promise. Today, we are so much engrossed in the dunya. Our hearts have become so hard. So my brothers, the month of Ramadan is coming around the corner. 
and we need to really make a transformation, make a permanent change. We can't just be thinking to ourselves, okay, it's a month of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this opportunity. We do tu'at today, those who are doing shabarat today, or even not doing shabarat, every night, it's not only the night of bara'a, but every night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he comes to the first heaven in the latter part and says, hal min sa'ilin, hal min mustarzikin, hal min mustaghfirin, Allahu Akbar. Is there anybody to ask from me? Is there anybody ask to ask from me for, for risk? Is there anybody for asking for forgiveness? I am here. Ala kaza, ala kaza, hatta yatli al fajr. So basically, until morning, until Subha Sadiq, this happens. So my brothers, my sisters, it's high time that we change and we change for better. We change permanently. We don't just make a change in the month of Ramadan. The biggest problem we have, like youngster, in the month of Ramadan, subhanAllah, he was reading all his five time prayers in the masjid. He used to be going to the masjid so early, to read his sunnats. He used to be after the salah, he used to be uh, making long du'as. I used to see him supplicating and besieging to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then on the day of Eid, so Zohar time, I saw him and he was not going to the masjid. He was completely uh, directed to the opposite direction. So I said, Brother Zohar Salah, because Mufti Saab, Ramadan finish. I said, Ramadan finished, but Namaz hasn't finished. So we have to take this mentality away from ourselves, from our brothers and sisters. We are Muslim full-time, not part-time. So each and every one of us, we need to keep that in mind. We need to keep that in mind. So, Worship your Lord until Yaqeen comes. So the point I want to say here is, Laylatul Bara, today we ask for forgiveness. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we uh, fast tomorrow as well. The hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyidun Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, إِذَا كَانَتْ لَيْلَةٌ نِسْفِ مِنْ شَعْبَانِ فَقُومُ لَيْلَهَا وَسُومُ يَوْمَهَا That when the 15th night comes, then stay, stand in prayer and fast the next day. And fasting, don't, as I said, don't just think, Achha, we just fast on that particular day. We make the intention of fasting on Monday. We can make multiple intentions. First of all, the Prophet ﷺ fasted in the month of Sha'ban. All entire months. So in that way, it is a sunnah. Secondly, the Prophet ﷺ, he fasted on Mondays and Thursdays. So Monday, tomorrow is a Monday. Thirdly, he told us and he himself practiced, he fasted on the Ayyame Bid, the moonlit nights. 13th, 14th, 15th of every month. So 15th falls on these three days as well. So three different intentions. Many of us will just fast because it's Laylatul Bara'a, the night before and then fast. No, no. We need to make a habit of fasting, as I said, Monday and Thursdays. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, why did he used to fast on Mondays and Thursdays? He says the deeds are presented to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And he says that I want my deeds to be presented whilst I'm fasting. Okay. So my brother, my sister, let us spend our time. And it's very important. If we want to be successful, one thing I always say to my brothers and sisters is have a timetable. Because we don't have a timetable, this is where the problem is. The Prophet ﷺ, what did he say? Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min shatatil amr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I ask refuge in you from being disorganized. You know, we have this oxymoron. Do you understand? So, basically, we think to ourselves that disorganized way, uh, any person, he has all these different kinds of things to do. So basically what happens is he thinks to himself, no, no, everything's organized. So like oxymoron, organized chaos. We have a chaos, organized chaos. So we, subhanAllah, because we don't have a timetable. When we read the life, the biography of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we realize that he had time for everything, fixed time. He used to meet his wives between Asr and Maghrib. He's mentioned in the Bukhari Sharif. He used to have time, like after Fajr, he used to be sitting in the masjid till the sunrise, and he used to read his Ishraq Salah. So after Isha, he used to uh, go to sleep early so he could wake up for Tahajjud. So all the, everything was timed. 
in the salata kanat al mu'minin kitab am mawquta indeed salah upon the believers is on fixed times stipulated time so each and every one of us we need to make a timetable if you want to be successful in the month of ramadan obviously i won't be able to talk too much about ramadan time is limited but i just like to say my brother my sister make a timetable strict to i mean be strict with the timetable adhere to the timetable strictly and make sure that you do something which will be easy for you don't put goals and targets which you cannot reach don't put any targets that's why in the hadith he says inna likulli shay'in shirratan wa likulli shirratin fatratan for everything there is hastiness and for every hastiness there is a pause the pause <laughs> so with the timetable we need to make sure that we adhere to the timetable in the month of ramadan is a time subhanallah is a training time have you realized and i always say that we need to make sure that we perform our tahajj our tarawih salat 20 rakats all brothers and sisters listening 20 rakats not 8 rakats not 10 rakats please get that in mind on a daily basis, we have 17 rakats of faras and three rakats of witr, which is 20 rakats, which are compulsory for us. And so because the month of Ramadan is a training time, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this opportunity on top of the 20 rakats of faraiz and wajib, we are reading another 20 rakats of tarawih. So subhanallah, in the month of Ramadan, because it's training time, we do everything double, double. So if we can read on top of the 20 rakats of faraiz, we can read under the 20 rakats, which are sunnah, then subhanAllah, why can't we read our salah? Why can't we perform and observe our salah out of Ramadan? In the month of Ramadan, if we can stay away from halal food and drink, halal way of satisfying our desires, if we can stay away from them in the month of Ramadan, why can't we stay away from haram out of Ramadan? So it's very important that this month is a month of training. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum suyam kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattafoon. Oh believers, Allah has made it faraz upon you. The month of fasting. Like the way it was faraz on those people who were prior to you, what, what is the reason? It's our benefit. It's for our own welfare. It's for our own betterment. So that we become God-fearing. We become God-conscious. Each and every one of us. Let us make a timetable. Don't be disorganized. Have a proper, strong timetable. Your sleeping time should be fixed. Don't just sleep on. After Fajr, you go to sleep and you sleep till Zohar. And then after Zohar namaz, you go to sleep again. No, no. Wake up, have a timetable, recite the Quran. Let us have a timetable where we are doing the khatam of the Quran. Allahu Akbar. Our pious predecessors, Muhammad ibn Idris al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, the noble imam, one of the four great imams. It was his noble habit to complete the entire Quran, complete Quran once in the daytime and once at night time on a daily basis. Hence, he used to complete 60 khatams in the month of Ramadan, apart from the one khatam that he used to do in his taraweeh. On top of that, Allahu Akbar. Similar narrations come regarding our great Imam, Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah ta'ala, our great spiritual mentor, Qutub al Aqtab, Shaykh al Hadith, Muhaddith al Asr, Barakat al Asr. Mawlana Muhammad Zakariya sahab, Nawwar Allahu Marqadahu Barwad Allahu Madji'ah. He, subhanallah, he mentions in Abbiti that he wrote about the great scholars, how they used to complete the Quran. So he wrote to all his friends, his murids, his students to increase in the recitation of the Holy Quran. So he says many who wrote back, mashallah, they completed daily one khatam, some who complete two khatams. So obviously out of humility, he doesn't mention his name, but he shows that he also practiced on this as well. It's just amazing. Mona Ilyas of Rahmatullah the Bani, the founder of the 
tablik jamaat his mother safi safiya rahmatullahi alaiha she used to recite 40 juz on a daily basis 40 juz my brother my sister with all the household chores so our sisters don't get busy in cooking and cleaning until asr namaz there should be nobody in the kitchen i was listening to a problem yesterday two families came and said about the iftar we start from zohar time every day after zohar time then when do you have the time to actually worship allah so you're sleeping till zohar and from zohar till maghrib you are just preparing iftar nowadays iftar you can even purchase it and so that will help out just make some simple iftar we're supposed to be thinking about the poor and we're supposed to be eating less in the month of ramadan we end up eating more and gaining weight allahu akbar the amount of oil that we consume in the month of ramadan that's more than the oil that we consume in the entire 11 months allahu akbar let us change this habit let us think about the poor our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allahu akbar how was his lifestyle sayyida aisha radiyallahu anha says urwa rahmatullahi alayhi her nephew narrates from her sayyida aisha radiyallahu anha says that we used to see the moon the sighting the hilal the new moon then we used to see it again the next month and we used to see it again the next month entire two months used to pass by but we never used to lit fire in the oven allahu akbar my brother my sister think and listen obviously we can't go to that level but these should be eye openers for us a lesson for us so urwa rahmatullahi alayhi asks his auntie khala sayyida aisha our beloved mother that how did you spend how did you live without any food like this? Because we only lived on aswadain. Aswadain? Dates and water. And sometimes from our neighborhood, they used to send us some milk and we used to drink the milk to quench our thirst and our hunger. Allahu Akbar. If we wanted this poverty, this hunger was out of his own choice. He wasn't out of desperation. It was out of choice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed the Prophet and said, Oh my beloved, if you want, I would transform all the mountains of Tihama, of Hijaz, into gold and silver. But the Prophet وسلم, modestly, politely, he declined. Allahu Akbar. So my brother, my sister, we all know we hear this and we will be continuously listening to bayans. There will be no use of listening to the bayans if we don't have any intention of practicing. If you can take this on board, bullet points. Number one, take the jealousy out kick it out of our minds and hearts at least we can start off pick the phone up do the salam face him be the strong one inna awla nasi billahi ta'ala man bada'ahum bis salam indeed the one who is the most closest to allah is the one who initiates the salam let us be that one who doesn't want to be the closest to allah take away that pride and arrogance and that haughtiness don't be so conceited Take that away from your life. That's number one. Number two, make a timetable for the month of Ramadan especially and have a timetable throughout your life. This time for sleeping. Our Salah time shouldn't be moving around. We should move around, rotate around the Salah time, not the Salah time moving. I didn't have the time. Okay, I'll read my Zohar. It's 1.30, so I'll read it at 2 o'clock. I'll read it at 3 o'clock just before the time elapses. That will make us lazy. So have a proper timetable. Number three, connect yourself. Let us connect ourselves with the Quran. This Quran is for ourselves, not for ourselves. This Quran is for ourselves, not for ourselves. That's why the Hadith of the Prophet says, "You ayati ala nas." A time will come upon the people. La yabqa min al Quran illa rasmu. Nothing will remain of the Quran but its rasm script. We have the Quran on our shelves. We have the Quran in our library. We have it in our bedroom. We have it in our apps. We send messages. Reminder to recite Surah Kaf, Surah Yasin. Recite Quran in the month of Ramadan. We send the message. We ourselves, we are completely away from this. We are bereft from the barakah of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
regarding the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he will be complained. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّي إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَحْجُورًا The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will say, Oh my Lord, indeed my people that deserted the Qur'an, they abandoned the Qur'an. So my brother, my sister, in the month of Ramadan, we need to connect ourselves, make a habit. No one should be spending the Ramadan without completing one Qur'an at least. One Qur'an is the minimum, my brother, my sister. Then three Qur'an, that's a kind of moderate kind of achievement. And best would be that a person finishes 10 khatams in the month of Ramadan. 10 paras every day, easily can be done. One para before namaz, one para after namaz. So in the month of Ramadan, Shaykh al Mullah Muhammad Zakariya sahab Nawwar al marqada who used to say that this is the month of Quran, nothing else. He used to meet his students, like Shaykh Abdul Qadir, Rai Puri Rahmatullah Ali. He used to meet everybody on the last day of Shaban. He said, I'll meet you in Shawwal on the day of Eid. Month of Ramadan, no meeting. So let us put our WhatsApp and all our social media on an emergency. I'm not telling you to completely switch it off, put on an emergency. Brother, sister, only urgent calls, only urgent messages, no messages if there is no benefit. Even those which are Islamic as well, there's no need to send 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes of something which a person can spend better by reciting the Quran. Because if you are sending something to all your group, for example, you have 250 people in the group, and you have sent a message, you a joke or something, and it's five minutes, you have destroyed 250 people's five minutes each. So basically, you will have to respond to Allah. You have to answer to Allah on the Day of Judgment. So before you send a message, the triple filter test, is it true or not? Is it good or not? Is it useful or not? If it isn't, don't do it. Don't give it. So let us act upon these points. And I didn't have no intention of talking about these points. I had other things to speak about. But Alhamdulillah, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made me say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted. And any mistakes, Allah please forgive. And um, I hope that everybody benefited. Allah give me the tawfiq, give you the tawfiq to act upon what has been said. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a prosperous Ramadan. Allah barik lana fi rajab wa sha'ban wa balighna Ramadan. Jazakallahu khair ahsan al jaza for listening attentively. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept Jamia Khatum al Nabiin for the khidmat of deen, for the da'wah of deen, the fatwa department. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the khidmat of our honorable teacher of JKN, Mufti Abdul Wahid Sab, Damat Barakatuh, for all the efforts that he's making, and all our teachers and apas, and all our graduates and students, and all our Muslim brothers and sisters, and keep us on Iman, give us death upon Iman, and raise us with our beloved Prophet وسلم, on the day of judgment. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين. جزاكم الله خير. مفتي ساب for that beautiful or inspiring بيان. Although مفتي ساب has repeatedly mentioned that you know he has digressed from the main topic. But الحمد لله everything what مفتي ساب has said is very much relevant for Ramadan as well as outside of Ramadan. So once again جزاك الله خير مفتي ساب for taking some time out because just want to mention that مفتي ساب الإسلام ساب is really really busy and uh, Mufti Saab did mention to me that um, he has uh, approximately has about five or six programs just today. Mufti Saab has got about five or six webinars and this was the first one to, this is the first one so I'm really appreciative that Mufti Saab took some time out to um, uh, give some time to Jake and Fatawa department to share some of his um, wisdoms and thoughts and, um, and spiritual bayans and I hope every one of us including myself Hope we uh, benefited from Mufti Sab quite immensely. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in Mufti Sab's ilm. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala barakah in his uh, life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in everything what he's doing. Uh, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve Mufti Sab as well so that we can all uh, ben spiritually benefit from Mufti Saif al Islam Sab. Ameen, Arbal Alameen. So we'll end with this, inshallah. Jazakum Allah khair once again for everybody's participation. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our efforts and enable us to. Um, Capitalize the fifteenth of the night of fifteenth Shaban and Ramadan. Wa akhiru da'wan alhamdulillahi wa bilalamin. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.